Hi everyone, in this video we would be learning about strategy design pattern which is one of the behavioral design pattern. Let's try to understand this design pattern with the help of couple of examples. So this is the first example. So we all might have purchased something online, right? So whenever we go to the checkout page, we see a page which will have something like this where we have to write our details like contact information and all those stuff and we have to select a particular payment method so over here we have selected this card so accordingly we have to fill this information like the expiry date the cvv and card holder name and so on and so forth if we select paypal then we would have to fill the email and all those stuff right so the point to note over here is we would be selecting a particular payment method and accordingly the payment would be done. If we select PayPal, then PayPal will be processing the payment. If we select GPay, then GPay will be processing the payment. What the strategy design pattern says is we have, we will have one function called as pay and dynamically we will change the logic of this pay function that is if the user selected paypal then this pay function will process the payment through paypal if the user selects gpay then this pay function will process the payment through the gpay right so we have one function but dynamically based on user selection we are changing the algorithm of that function okay and that is what the strategy design pattern is saying it is saying that it's a design pattern that allows you to choose different algorithms or behaviors at runtime so over here you are choosing different algorithms different paying algorithms at runtime okay now let's try to understand this with one more example so assume that you are playing one game and in that game you are one wizard like this and whenever you click on attack button you would throw one fireball on your enemies okay and your game also has some power ups for example if you if you take this power up then you would be throwing fireball on your enemy if you take this power up then you would be throwing this lightning on your enemy if you take this power up then you would be freezing your enemy okay so what is happening is you have one function that is attack but whenever you take different power up the algorithm of that attack is changing if this ice cube is taken then instead of throwing fireball your attack button will throw the ice right it will freeze your enemy so that's what the strategy design pattern says it is saying that you are you choose different algorithms or behavior at runtime. So over here as well, you are changing the algorithm of attack during the runtime. Whenever you would select a particular power up or you would take a particular power up while playing the game. So I hope you understood the example and the definition. Also, what we'll do is we'll try to understand the UML first. So in the UML diagram, we have one interface called as payment strategy, which will have this pay function. And this pay function will be implemented by concrete strategies like credit card payment or Google, Google pay payment or PayPal payment. And we will also have one class. And in general terms, this class is called as context. Okay. So over here, the name of this class I have given is payment processor. In this payment processor, 
we would be injecting one of the strategies based on the user selection. So if user selected the Google Pay, then we would inject this particular strategy over here using either constructor injection or setter injection. And whenever someone calls this function called as process payment, we will use the pay function of the strategy. So if this strategy is let's say PayPal, then we would call the pay function of PayPal. I hope you are understanding this thing. So based on the strategy, the pay function would be called. And in the client code, we would just call the process payment. That is this function. Now before checking the code for this example, we'll also try to answer what will happen if you don't use strategy design pattern. So assume that you are playing a game in that game. There is one robot. Now this robot has three different functions. First is move. Second is speak. Third is attack. Now each of this function can have one of these three behaviors. Let's say this robot can either walk or it can fly or it can run for this moving logic. Okay. For the attacking logic, let's say it can either punch or either use a laser or either use a sword. Right. So what we can do is we can create nine different strategies like this walk strategy, fly strategy, run strategy, etc. And you would create this robot before the game starts. Now let's say while playing the game, you want a robot which could fly, which could speak and which could punch the enemy. So what you can do is you can just inject the strategies like this. Isn't it? Now let's say instead of punching, you want to use laser. So instead of punch strategy, you would now inject laser strategy. That's it. Now, if you call the attack function, then the robot will use the laser on the enemies. Okay. So point to note over here is in the strategy design pattern, we created total nine strategies in order to have the required behaviors at the runtime. But let's say we don't use this strategy design pattern. So in that case, what we have to do is we have to create all those classes beforehand. So let's say if we need a robot which can walk, which can speak and which can use a sword. So we have to create this robot beforehand, right? Similarly, we would be creating total 27 robots based on different combinations of these functions. So that is 3 into 3 into 3, 27. Right. And this is a problem. This problem is called class explosion because we are using a lot of classes in order to have this feature implemented. Right. So this is the problem. And this problem called as class explosion can be eliminated with the help of strategy design pattern. Because here we are just using nine strategies. So I hope now you understood what is the benefit of using strategy design pattern where it is needed. Okay. And we have also seen the UML diagram for strategy design pattern. And we have also seen a couple of examples and the definitions. So now let's see the code for this payment logic. So over here we have the interface called as payment strategy, which will have this pay function. And we have this concrete strategies. The first concrete strategy is credit card payment and it will implement this pay function. So in this pay function, we would have the actual logic, which will process the payment through credit card. And in the Google Pay payment class, we would have the pay function, which would process the payment through the Google Pay. Same thing will happen in the PayPal as well. Okay, so these three strategies will be used 
in our application and this is the context that i was speaking about in the uml diagram so in this context we generally inject the strategy either through the constructor or through the setter and we have one function called as process payment which will take the amount as the input so what we are doing in this function is we are calling the pay function of the strategy injected if the strategy injected is paypal then pay function of paypal would be called if the strategy injected is google pay then pay function of google pay will be called okay so this is what will be happening in this function now coming to the main dot java so what i am doing is i am allowing the user to select one of this payment method right let's say user selected gpay then at the run time we would be creating the google pay payment strategy okay and if user selected paypal then at run time we would be creating paypal payment strategy okay so for creating the objects we know that we can use factory design pattern right so over here as well we'll use factory design pattern to create the strategies once the strategy is created based on user input we would inject that strategy into the context so this was the context right so whenever we call the process payment function of the context we would process the payment according to this strategy so let's run the code and see what will happen so over here i have three options in front of me so let's assume that i select google pay that is option 2 it is asking me to write the pin so let's say this is the pin as you can see the payment has been done through google pay because i selected option 2 now let's rerun the code now this time i'll select the paypal that is option 1 now it is asking me to write down my email now the payment has been processed through paypal so i hope now you are understanding strategy design pattern so in the strategy design pattern what we do is we dynamically inject the strategy okay that is we are dynamically changing the algorithm of this function the function name is same but inside that the logic is getting different based on user selection okay so this was all about strategy design pattern if you have any doubt comment down i'll try to answer and if you understood this thing then please like the video and subscribe to the channel thanks for watching